What is up guys, welcome to the video, five things I love about my Triumph and five things that I hate. We've got Bob with us, helping with our editing. Bob, take it easy bruv, you need the day off. So let's start off with the positives. Uh, number one, one of the things that I love about my Triumph is the looks. <laughs> Alright guys, this is my third time recording this now. Bob's trolling us hard today. Uh, from blowing us kisses with his butt to making snorting noises, he's just giving us a hard time while we're trying to record. Boy, just loves his trolling. Anyway, so let's crack on. Um, from this bike's just the looks, from anything, from the fact that it pays homage to its triple engine by giving signs of free throughout the whole bike. Start off with the, you know, the front lights, there's three, three lights. The gauge clusters, you know, three gauge clusters. If you move on to the side, you see the belts on either side, you know, there's three different bolts. Uh, go all the way to the back, there's three exhausts, you know, three exhaust tips. It's just the fact that this bike has so much attention to detail, it's just an amazing looking bike. The single sided swing arm, you know, this bike was designed 1998, 1999, it's just a great looking bike. And I think, personally, it holds up by one of the better looking bikes by today's standards. But that's my personal opinion, you know, a lot of people love these naked sports bikes, it's just not for me. For me, just love this look of these sports tourers. And, you know, there's not many of them about anymore. I think Kawasaki are the only people who are really doing fair in sports tourers now. Most bikes are all adventure tourings, but we'll come on to that. And in at number two, I love the fact that it's a Triumph and it's a British manufacturer. Now, unfortunately, this comes only a few days after Triumph have announced that due to the virus, they're making 400 job cuts globally. Um, but I do love the fact that it matches the Mini. You know, both of them are blue, both got black decals, both are British manufactured. So I really love that about the uh, bike, that the bike and the Mini both match each other. And in at number three, I love the fact that it is a 1050cc. So at the end of the day, <laughs> litre bike, bro. It's got around 123 horsepower, uh, just over 9,000 RPM with around 140 meters of torque. So it's a good engine. Um, it pulls really hard. It's not a snatchy throttle at all. Um, you can actually deliver the power quite easily and quite comfortably, um, which is perfect. It's exactly what you want from a sports tourer. And that brings us nicely onto the fourth thing I love about the bike, sports and touring, all in one package. Now, when it was first launched, it was probably more seen as a sports biased bike. Um, it's a quick bike, um, but as the years have gone on and faster and newer bikes have come out, it's probably seen more as a bike that people use for touring now. But it's a great bike that you could comfortably ride to the Alps um, and then have fun in the twisties. It's got great luggage capabilities and there are some really good aftermarket options for the luggage as well. And that brings me nicely on to the fact that it's not made anymore. And I love the fact that the bike isn't actually made anymore because you almost feel like you're in an exclusive club. Um, Triumph don't make sports tourers anymore. Not many manufacturers do make sports tourers anymore. Triumph make sport, um, adventure tourers. They make retro classics. They make naked sports bikes. They don't really do sports tourers. No one does. So by having the Sprint ST 1050, you almost feel like you're a member of an exclusive club, like you've stumbled across this hidden secret that not many people know about. The sports tourer bikes, I don't know why they're not as popular as they used to be. You know, a lot of people are favouring the naked bikes, but I'd rather have the fairing. I'd rather have that protection. You know, a lot of people are going for adventure bikes. I, I, I don't know why you don't go off road. So why do you need this big adventure bike? It's like a Range Rover. It will never go off road. They don't look as good as sports bikes. So why are you kidding yourself that you're ever going to go further off road than your own driveway? So sports tourists, you know, you feel like you're part of an exclusive club. 
editing and recording the five things that I love about the Triumph has proven too much for Bob. He's just fallen asleep. He just can't do it anymore. So we're going to have to crack on without him. But you might have to put up with a little bit of background snoring noise because the boy's just tuckered out. He's asleep and he's just... He's, just, he's had enough. He can't go on anymore. So we'll crack on without him. Anyway, in at number one, um, I love the fact that the bike isn't made anymore. But I also hate the fact that this bike isn't made anymore. Can you imagine if they made, if Triumph made another sports tourer? If the Sprint was back into production, um, it would be an amazing bike. It would have shaft drive. It would have a digital dash. It would be lighter. It would be faster. It would be an amazing bike. Question, would it have the Tiger's engine, either the new 1250 or the old 1200, or would it have the Triple RS engine, or would it have something new, something different, something specifically designed for a sports tourer, not an adventure tourer and not a naked sports bike? Would Triumph have built a specific engine for a sports tourer? And this isn't exclusive to the Triumph. This is all bikes. I can't take Bob with me. I've tried to fit him on the bike. You know, he uh, he sits there. He doesn't really like being a pillion. So that's always a bit of an issue. Um, he does have his own little leather jacket. Uh, he's all kitted out and ready to ride. But he's just for show. He doesn't ever go out. And moving on to number three. It's old tech. It's getting a bit long in the tooth now. Not just my bike, but the bike itself. The Sprint ST was designed probably 20 years ago now. Um, my bike's 14 years old. You know, I've got a few oil leaks, got a few little things that I need to take care of. But the technology and the design of the bike itself, whilst in most angles holds up by today's standards, if you look at the back seat um, as standard, you could definitely tell some late 90s style in there. Um, the gauge cluster. The Speedo, I don't know who designed it, but they must have had the best eyesight ever. If you're doing just a smidge over 70, it's impossible to see the Speedo. If you're doing certain speeds, should we say, you just can't look down at the Speedo and see the minuscule gap between, say, 70 and 100. It's a matter of about an inch. And an inch counts, but <laughs> in this case... It's it's just too goddamn small to see and to read. And in at number four, we have pudding. And no, I don't mean that kind of pudding. I mean that kind of pudding. The original electrical system for the Sprint ST was just not up to the job. They were minuscule, tiny cables, and you need to upgrade the electrical system. You need to upgrade in the battery cables and the wiring and the rectifier and everything to do with the bike's electrical system. And that moves us on to the bike's weight. And whilst it's not as heavy as some bikes, it's still a sports tourer um, with a dry weight of around 213 kilograms for the ABS model. Compare that to the Tiger, the 1200. I think it's around 253 kilograms dry weight. Both bikes carry their weight very differently. The Tiger, um, you know, is designed to be used off-road. It's designed to have a weight and be manoeuvrable, whereas the Sprint SD just carries its weight like a barge. Hi right, guys, that's my five things I love about my Triumph and five things I hate from Bob and myself. Thanks for watching.